Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the 2015 Retina MacBook Pro and see if this MacBook is still worth buying in 2023. Now, funny enough, I used this MacBook for a long, long period of time, probably longer than I should have. I think I stopped using it around 2019, maybe even early 2020. So basically from like 2018 when I bought this MacBook up until now, I was using this MacBook every single day. And I loved it so much. It was my go-to device. I was editing tons and tons of videos on this thing. And I had a great time with it. Nowadays, I don't really think this MacBook is completely worth buying anymore. But if you're in the market, I will leave some MacBooks I would recommend in the description below. So you can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of these MacBooks. And this was the year right before Apple went ahead and made those drastic, crazy changes with their next iterations of, you know, of their MacBooks. I was about to say iPhones. Now with their MacBooks, you know, with the 2015 model, even these ones were a little tiny bit controversial because they did remove some of the ports that we had on the 2012 MacBooks. But by the time the 2014 MacBook Pro came out, I think a lot of people were completely okay with this type of MacBook. Now, when you consider that this was the last one right before this 2016 MacBooks that brought the touch bar that basically, you know, removed almost all the ports except for USB C's, I think this was a really, really good spot for Apple and, you know, for them to continue selling a MacBook like the 2015 MacBook because so many people were still in love with this type of device. So I picked mine up around, I think, 2018, like I mentioned before, and I had, like I said, I bought the cheapest model that I could, and I was so content with that MacBook. I was coming from a 2014 Retina MacBook Pro, and just a few things, I mean, I had just just from what everyone kind of stated about the performance increases and whatnot, I kind of felt like this was a really good step up. And I used this MacBook for almost two years before I ended up buying, I think, a 2015 iMac, and even that was a really good experience too. Now, on the outside of this specific MacBook, you are getting that beautiful top. It's an aluminum finish, and it still looks very, very very premium. Like I said before, I mean, Apple's never made like a cheap MacBook. So this thing definitely does not feel cheap. It feels very good. And even compared to like my M1 Pro MacBook or my M2 Pro MacBook, I mean, th they feel almost identically the same. Of course, the 20, the newer ones feel a little bit probably more premium. I still think Apple did a great job with those specific models. And I still think it holds up very, very well in terms of the build quality. Now on the sides, you are getting that port selection. So it's a little bit of a different, you know, situation because like I said, this thing does have a less ports than the 2012 MacBook, but it's still more than what you would get on like a you know 2016 macbook pro but i would say it's pretty much on par to what we're getting on like our new m1 pro macbooks so it's kind of all over the place on the left side of our 2015 macbook pro we're getting our magsafe 2 charger we're getting two thunderbolt 2 ports a usb 3 port and a headphone jack so that is on one side of the macbook on the other side, we were getting our SD card slot, our HDMI port, and our USB 3 port on the other side. So essentially, we were getting USB ports on both sides, which was nice. And we had the added benefit of getting two Thunderbolt 2 ports on the left side of our MacBook as well. Now, there was one reason why I kept this MacBook and why I you know, kept buying this MacBook over my other ones. And it was basically because of that SD card slot. Now, I'm kind of remembering to myself, I ended up having a 13-inch 2015 Retina MacBook Pro, but I ended up upgrading to a 2015 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. So this is one of those MacBooks I actually had two models on. I had the cheaper one and I had the more expensive one. And I, the reason I upgraded was because I wanted to maintain the same ports, but I did want a little bit more power and a little bit more RAM. Now, I could have probably just kept my 2015 one a little bit longer, but I wanted to see how that bigger size kind of held up. And I mean, I had a great time with that bigger sized MacBook. The only issue was, was the fans would kick on all of the time. So if I was recording audio, I would just have to like hurry up and record like 15 minutes at a time or close out of every single thing I was doing on my MacBook because the fans would just ramp up like crazy. Very, very annoying thing. But luckily since then, the M chipsets have been a way better job. But I will tell you, both MacBooks, again, the reason why I kept them for so long was because of the SD card slots. And that was one thing I will never, ever even consider giving up at that moment. Funny enough, I did end up doing it and I got my M1 Pro, or I got my M1 MacBook Pro, and that was a very good MacBook as well. But I, even then, I still miss my SD card slot I had inside of my 2015 MacBook. Now that kind of covers it up on the outside. Now flipping this thing open, we had a beautiful display on the inside. So this thing came out in two different sizes. You had that 13 inch size and you had that 15 inch size. Now, personally for me, I think that 13 inch size was very good. It was a very good machine. It was so portable, so you could easily go ahead 
and basically carry this thing anywhere that you wanted to go to. And anytime I went somewhere, like if I had to go travel, which I barely even did, but if I had to go put my MacBook into a book bag and then bring it to wherever, I could easily do that. It was so small. And I did travel with that a few times, like very, very few times. And it was just so nice not having to worry about dragging this whole entire humongous MacBook with me. And that was a very nice experience. With something like my 20, you know, even like my, you know, M1 Pro MacBook, I can kind of sense sometimes that it's maybe a little bit too big for me. And this is the 14 inch model. That 13 inch model was way, like it was like the perfect size for me at that time. Now, the display itself is really good. However, it is not a ProMotion display. So you are missing out on a few things that we have nowadays. ProMotion is really nice. It's a super nice feature. And again, this MacBook didn't have it, but it was still a fairly nice display. On the bottom, you had our keyboard. And this was another reason people ended up buying this MacBook over and over and over again. They loved that keyboard. They hated the touch bar. And I mean, rightfully so. I mean, the touch bar is just like a very awkward thing to have. And I do think with a MacBook like this, I mean, you are getting a very solid device in my opinion. And again, this is pretty much no exception. Now the trackpad at the bottom was great. It was the first time we got that vibration motor inside of it. So it wasn't really like a button you clicked. It was basically just like a vibration sensor. And that was a really nice thing too on this MacBook. And overall, when I look at this MacBook, I think again, Apple did a tremendous job with it. They recycled basically everything on the outside. But that was kind of why people liked this MacBook was because it didn't really deviate from the norm and people just really did not like those 2016 to like 2019 MacBooks. And that's kind of where we were at during that moment. Now the performance of these MacBooks can differ so you can spec this thing out at a few different ways. But I will tell you from my experience, having a MacBook like this nowadays, it is showing its age, but it's not because this MacBook is super slow. It's because our MacBooks have gotten so much better. Apple has moved away from Intel and they've made their own Apple Silicon. So because of that, we are now in a situation where Apple is pretty much dominating the basically the power to, you know, therm basically the power to battery, you know, situation. So battery to power, you're basically getting a way better performing chipset overall from something like the M1 or M2 MacBooks than on like a 2015 Intel MacBook Pro. So it's not the end of the world. It's not like the craziest thing ever, but it is a very, very big difference. And like I mentioned, the big difference I personally saw, even coming from my iMac, was that the fans aren't kicking up all the time. If I'm exporting a bunch of videos at one time, which I do consistently, the fans would kick on immediately as I'm editing the video on my 2015 MacBook Pro. While I'm editing it, or maybe as soon as I drag my video into the timeline on Final Cut Pro, it, the fans would kick on before even I even drag the video on. With my new Mac, with the new MacBooks, even on my M1 MacBook Pro I had before this one, that thing, I mean, it would take a lot for the fans to kick on. By the time I'm done exporting all my videos, I would basically hear the fan, but that's after like five or eight or 10 videos at a time. Even my M1 Pro MacBook, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. So I say that to say with a MacBook like the 2015 one, it isn't the end of the world if you're still using it, but there's a few things to keep in mind. The new MacBooks are much better than this thing, but also, I mean, if you really think about it, you know, the 2015 MacBook Pro is also unsupported with software, you know, during this moment too. So that makes even less sense to go and buy a MacBook like that one because it's no longer getting support. So at the end of the day, is the 2015 MacBook Pro still worth it? I would probably say no. You know, I, I don't think this MacBook is worth buying if you're planning on using it as an everyday MacBook. However, if you're planning on getting this MacBook and you plan on just, you know, basically using it on it as like a side device of some sort or something like that, then maybe that's okay. But I think for every, like for all intents and purposes, it doesn't make a lot of sense to go ahead and buy a MacBook like this, if I'm being honest. So at the very least, buy something like a 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. That might make a little bit more sense. But you know, you can buy those things for fairly cheaper nowadays too. So in terms of that, it kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, well done.